EWTN's Cathedrals Across America presents From Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary Cathedral in Biloxi, Mississippi The Mass of Ordination and Installation of Monsignor Louis Kenneman III as the 4th Bishop of the Diocese of Biloxi
the Lord has told us that when two or more gather in his name, he is present. Let us gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Since early this morning, the words of a hymn of praise have been echoing in my ears and rolling around in my head based on the Psalms. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Indeed. It is certainly with a happy heart that I enjoy this occasion to be able to welcome all of you to the Nativity Cathedral of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Bishop's Church in the Diocese of Biloxi. And it is in these uh, waning hours or minutes of my term of service in Biloxi. But uh, this is the day the Lord has made. <laughs> And following that directive of the psalmist, I want to be glad in it. I have the privilege of uh, welcoming into our midst, of course, all of you who are gathered together in prayer for this solemn occasion for the ordination of Bishop Kinnaman and his installation as the fourth bishop of Biloxi. We are honored to have in our presence the Holy Father's personal representative in the United States, the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, who will in effect deliver the decree that puts into effect what the Holy Father has directed in blessing this diocese with Louis Kinnaman as its fourth bishop. We are pleased to point out that presiding is Archbishop Thomas Rohde, the Archbishop of Mobile, who was my predecessor as Bishop of Biloxi. And we are blessed with the presence of Bishop Joseph Lawson Howes, the founding Bishop of the Diocese of Biloxi. So as we celebrate our 40th anniversary as a diocese this year, we also mark the occasion with the installation of the fourth Bishop of Biloxi. And so it is a great pleasure for all of us. My heart's desire is to warmly greet all of you and to pray that this occasion, that united in prayer, we will be abundantly blessed not only on this day, but for many years to come. I say to the bishop elect, soon to be ordained, that he can celebrate and enjoy these festivities and rightly so. Thereafter, <laughs> I haven't even said it yet. Uh, thereafter, the memory of this uh, moment of uh, support and being united in prayer with uh, bishops and brother priests and family and friends, the memories will certainly be a source of support in the years ahead. As he ventures out into the diocese, perhaps echoing in his mind on some evenings returning home will be something that occurred to me, taken from the words of the New England poet Robert Frost, whose poem, one of which ends, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. God bless you, Bishop-elect Kinnaman. And sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, 
Seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who out of the abundance of your untold grace alone chose to set your servant and priest Lewis over your church of Biloxi this day, grant that he may carry out worthily the office of bishop and under your governance in all things May he direct by word and example the people entrusted to his care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rendering the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, 
but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After there was fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, 
who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen one? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being slain all the day. We are looked upon as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowd from the boat. 
After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Most Reverend Father, the Church of Biloxi <coughs> asks you to ordain this priest, Louis F. Kinneman, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Have your mandate from the Apostolic See. We have. Let it be read. Your Excellency, Metropolitan Archbishop Rodi, Your Excellencies, Bishop Maureen, Bishop Ose, Bishop Mulve, and Bishop Elect Kineman, my brother archbishops and bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious and lay faithful of the church in Biloxi, dear friends. Centuries ago, in his work, The Imitation of Christ, the German cleric Thomas Akempis wrote, Homo proponit, said Deus disponit. Man proposes, but God disposes. How grateful to God we are, Bishop Elek Kinneman, that you have fully recovered from your recent surgery and that we are at long last here together in this venerable cathedral of the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as you are ordained to the fullness of the priesthood and solemnly installed as the fourth bishop of Biloxi. And how beautiful it is that all the former bishops of this beloved diocese are present with us Inclusive, including his first bishop, Bishop Joseph Lawson Ose. Here he is. <laughs> Truly, with full hearts, it, in this beautiful Easter season, we can all joyfully sing Alleluia. On this wonderful occasion, it is good to recall the timeless words of the fathers of the Second Vatican Council as they reflected upon the role of the bishop in exercising his office of father and pastor, the bishop should be with his people as one who serves, as a good shepherd who knows his sheep and whose sheep know him, as a true father who excels in his love and solicited for all, to whose divinely confirmed authority all readily submit. That's how it will be, isn't it? He should so unite and mold his flock into one family that all, conscious of their duties, may live and act in the communion of charity. Bishop-elect Kineman, through the intercession of St. Joseph the Worker and St. Martin the Porres, patron saints of this local church, may, we, may you be, for the clergy and people being entrusted to your pastoral care, and also for the community at large, a father, a pastor, a good shepherd, a brother, who is in his faithful Episcopal ministry, will continue to build up this portion of the Lord's flock into a vibrant communion of charity. And it will be remiss on my part if I did not extend heartfelt gratitude to the third Bishop of Biloxi, His Excellency Roger, I, I am actually hesitating how to pronounce it, you know? <laughs> Maureen or Morin? Roger. He does not know, he does not know. <laughs> what can we do? <laughs> your Excellency, thank you for your years of dedicated leadership. We all thank you very much for this year's years. In fact, yesterday was the eighth anniversary of his Episcopal installation. 
Bishop Morin, or Morin. <laughs> May the good Lord continue to bless you in the years ahead. Amen. And now, with great joy, I will read for you the apostolic letter of appointment. You know, as, as always says, it is sent by the Pope. It's a letter which will be shown to you in Latin, signed by the Holy Father. But we, unless you want me to read it in Latin, <laughs> we have written a nice and simple translation in good English. <laughs> Francis, Bishop, servant of the servants of God, to our beloved son, Louis Kinneman, from the clergy of the Diocese of Corpus Christi, and up to now, Vicar General there and pastor of St. Philip the Apostle Parish in Corpus Christi, appointed Bishop of the Ecclesial Community of Biloxi, greetings and apostolic blessing. Each and every day, we fervently beseech God, our omnipotent Father, to direct the path of all the faithful on the course to holiness and to strengthen their minds and hearts with his grace. Indeed, at this time, we must make special provision for the flock in Biloxi, owing to the resignation of its former ordinary, our venerable brother, Roger Paul Morin. For this reason, in our desire to appoint a new shepherd to the church in Biloxi, we have turned our thoughts to you, beloved son. For in the zealous and diligent exercise of various posts in your pastoral ministry in the Diocese of Corpus Christi, you have clearly shown human and priestly virtues, a love for the church, doctrinal richness, and pastoral expertise. Therefore, by our apostolic authority, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, we appoint you Bishop of Biloxi, conferring upon you the relative rights and imposing the respective obligations which are connected with this office. You may receive episcopal ordination from any Catholic bishop outside the city of Rome the liturgical prescripts being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity. I hope you have done it. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Towards us and our successors in accordance with the laws and norms of the church. In addition, you must inform the clergy. We are doing that today. Eh? and the faithful of Biloxi about this, our decree. And we urge all of them to walk together with their new shepherd who has been given to them on the path of daily life, faithfully observing the divine precepts. Finally, beloved son, it is our earnest desire that you carefully carry out the new office being entrusted to you, proclaiming correctly to the flock entrusted to your pastoral care, the truth of salvation. Given at Rome at St. Peter's on the 16th day of the month of December, in the year of the Lord, 2016, the fourth of our pontificate. And it is signed, Francis.
They say that anything that's good is worth waiting for. <laughs> and we have waited for something very good, Bishop-elect Kinnaman, and that is to say, welcome to the Diocese of Biloxi. Thank you. God bless. Excellencies, Archbishop Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, Bishop Morin, Bishop Howes, the bishops of the province of Mobile, my brother bishops, priests, deacons, religious, laity, ecumenical representatives, and particularly the family and friends of Bishop Elect Kinnaman. It is an honor to be with all of you and especially with you, my brother, Lewis. Thank you for selecting the readings for today's Mass, and particularly that passage from the first book of Kings about Elijah on Mount Horeb. It is a favorite passage of mine as well. Some say that this passage teaches that God speaks to us through a gentle voice, while it is often true that God speaks to us in whispers, God is also quite capable of speaking to us through dramatic events as well. He sometimes speaks in the earthquakes and the storms. Perhaps there's an alternative way of appreciating this passage when it is read in its context. It may be helpful for all of us to recall the story of Elijah. The prophet Elijah lived in a time when many people had forgotten God. And to make matters worse, the king Ahab and his wife, the queen Jezebel, were fostering idolatry in Israel. Elijah opposed them, and in an intense moment on Mount Carmel, Elijah had 450 prophets of Baal killed. Queen Jezebel was enraged and sent a message to Elijah that by the next day she would have him killed. She meant it, and she could do it. So Elijah fled from Israel and traveled a great distance to Mount Horeb, also called Mount Sinai, the mountain where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And in the 19th chapter of that first book of Kings, when Elijah came to the mountain and took shelter in a cave, God spoke to him and asked, Why are you here, Elijah? In other words, I did not ask you to leave the ministry which I had given you to do in Israel, and to come here. Why are you here, Elijah? And Elijah answered with an intensity of frustration, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, but the Israelites have forsaken your covenant. They have destroyed your altars and murdered your prophets by the sword. I alone remain, and they seek to take my life. And God, in effect, says to Elijah, Catch your breath. I'll speak with you later. And so Elijah returned to the shelter of the cave and waited. And then there was the mighty storm, followed later by a powerful earthquake. And then, as just proclaimed in the passage read, God spoke to Elijah in the gentle breeze. And God asked Elijah the exact same question. Why? Are you here, Elijah? You know, let's try this again, Elijah. Why are you here? And Elijah answers in exactly the same words. I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, but the Israelites have forsaken your covenant. They have destroyed your altars and murdered your prophets by the sword. I alone remain, and they seek to take my life. Elijah is drained. He is exhausted. 
He is nearing the breaking point. But God dealt with him with such gentleness, gentleness, not in the storm or in the earthquake, but in the gentle breeze. And we see here the gentle mercy of God. And it seems obvious that in that moment, God reminded Elijah where he was standing. He was standing on the same mountain where Moses stood when he received the Ten Commandments. And recall what was happening as Moses received the Ten Commandments. The people of God were at the base of the mountain worshiping a golden calf. And as recorded in the book of Exodus, God told Moses, leave me alone then, that my anger may burn against my people to consume them. But Moses begged God to have mercy and spare the people even in their idolatry. As the Bible says, Moses stood in the breach to ask mercy for his people. And in effect, God told Elijah, Moses got it. He knew, I am a God of mercy. But you, Elijah, have no mercy in your voice. As you stand here, you are only complaining about your people. I will not destroy the people. I will send you to turn their hearts back to me. And so God, in that 15 verse of the 19th chapter of 1 Kings, says to Elijah, go back. God commanded Elijah, remember who I am and renew the faith of the people. God sends you, my brother Lewis, in this age where, as in the time of Elijah, many have turned from God, he sends you to renew the faith of the people into an increasingly secular, and disbelieving society, he sends you to shepherd his people of the Diocese of Biloxi. There will be joyful times as you serve as bishop. There will be grace-filled successes and uplifting moments. May you know many of these moments, and may you savor them. But. There will also be times when you, as did Elijah, may want to flee from your ministry and tell God this is too much. You, like the apostles in the Gospel of Luke just proclaimed, may want to stop fishing because of disappointing results. In those times, the message of God to you will be the same as the message to Elijah. Go back. And the same as to the apostles in today's gospel, put out into the deep water and lower your nets again for a catch. Renew the faith of your people. And so we here pray with you and for you that you will go into your ministry as bishop. Go and refresh those who struggle with the challenges of life as Jesus strengthened the faith of Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. Go and bring the good news of salvation to those who live in their sins, as Jesus did on the street in Jericho when he spoke to Zacchaeus. Go and heal the heart wounded and ashamed of sin, as Jesus healed Peter after Peter's denial on the shore of the Sea of Galilee after Easter. In short, go and bring the merciful love of God to many, and many to the merciful love of God. Be convinced that the Lord is with you, and that, as Paul told us today in his letter to the Romans, nothing will separate us from the love of God. Remind the people that God is with them, I think the, that the great challenge of faith for believers today is not so much 
that we doubt God exists, but rather we are tempted to doubt that God knows we exist. At times of challenges, God can seem so distant, so silent, and that we are separated from him. We can call out, where are you, God? Don't you care? Lewis, strengthen your people in their faith that God is with us and that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And be convinced that the Lord is with you through the help of those who join you in your ministry, the wonderful priests, deacons, religious laity of this blessed diocese of Biloxi. I am confident that you will find that you have come to a very special place in the heart of God called South Mississippi. There is a genuine and strong sense of place here from the coast through the pine belt. And there are wonderful and dear people here. Strengthen them and let them strengthen you. Most of all, allow the Lord to strengthen you. You chose Psalm 23 for us to reflect upon in this Mass today, and you chose Psalm 23 for your Episcopal motto, the Lord is my shepherd. Let it inspire you. Allow the Lord to be your good shepherd. And then go, and symbolized by your staff and your motto, be that good shepherd for the people you have been called to serve. Amen. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers ordains that a bishop-elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and discharge his duty. And so, dear brother, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles, which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of our hands? I do. Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith entire and incorrupt as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in the unity of that body together with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father and sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and deacons? I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all who are in need? I do. Do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people? to carry out the office of high priest without reproach. I do with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Amen. Dear beloved, let us pray that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the church will grant an abundance of his church for this chosen one.
of Antioch, pray for us, St. Lawrence, pray for us, St. Perpetua and St. Felicity, pray for us, St. Agnes, pray for us, St. Gregory, pray for us, St. Augustine, pray for us, St. Athanasius, pray for us, Pray for us, Saint Martin. Pray for us, Saint Benedict. Pray for us, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us, Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us, Saint John Vianney. Pray for us, Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. Saint Anthony, pray for us. Saint Louis, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint John of the Cross, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Calcutta, pray for us. Saint Bernadette, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Avila, pray for us. Saint Jose Sanchez del Rio, pray for us. Saint Peter Claver, pray for us. All Vietnamese martyrs, pray for us. All holy men and women saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by your incarnation. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, Lord we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and a true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, gracious. 
graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and pour out upon this your servant the power of your blessing, flowing from the horn of priestly grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be and who lay down observances in your church through the word of your grace, who from the beginning foreordained a nation of the just born of Abraham, who established rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who from the foundation of the world were pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Pour out now upon this your Holy One, that power which is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the Spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles, who established the church in each place as your sanctuary for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, but this your servant, whom you have chosen from the office of bishop, may shepherd your holy flock, 
serving you night and day. May he fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood, so that always gaining your favor, he may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decree, and loose every bond according to the power given by you to the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has made you a share in the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings. Receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Amen. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, 
adorned with undefiled faith and preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Amen. Receive the mitre and may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfading crown of glory. Amen. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God. Amen.
night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my soul. Blessed are you, Lord God of all Since creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread right we offer you, who to the earth work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, you have become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. So my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even in safety shall my body rest, for you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved no decay. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all the souls church. 
we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he has chosen men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you, and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her <coughs> through the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, all the bishops, and those who hold, those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mary Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, 
Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your holy family, which we make to you, also for me, your unworthy servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishops. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in me, so that what I have received of divine commission, I may fulfill in divine assistance. Be blessed, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable <coughs> so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, he took <coughs> bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a sincere and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless <coughs> victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, 
Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but <coughs> granting your, us your pardon through Christ our Lord. <coughs> through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. So the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Peace be, peace be with you. Understood.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my word. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
mighty price. Body price. Body price. Thank you. 
Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy, graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
think we can close the doors of the church because I'm not leaving yet. <laughs> First, I want to say thank you to God for getting me here. It was quite a journey to get here. In much love and honor to Pope Francis, I'm very humbled by his uh, phone call through uh, Archbishop Pierre. Uh, appreciate uh, Archbishop Pierre especially. Uh, it's a tremendous honor, but it's also breathtaking at the same time. Um, special thank you to Archbishop uh, Rodi, uh, Archbishop of Mobile, and uh, the celebrant for the ordination. Thank you, Tom, appreciate you very much. Of course, uh, Bishop Roger Morin, uh, also participating in the ordination. I uh, appreciate you very much in a special way. And And Bishop Michael Mulvey of uh, Corpus Christi, who I've uh, served with for the last seven years. Uh, thank you and blessings to you and for participating. <laughs> uh, Father Dennis Carver, who's the rector and has pulled us all together. We appreciate him very, very much. And Dennis, wherever you are. Monsignor Dominic Fulham, our Vicar General, appreciate you in a very special way for helping help this all ha to happen, along with the committee. The committee's been wonderful. It's all gone spot, I mean, flawless. I really appreciate all your hard work. So appreciate y'all. So all the deacons, all the religious, uh, we appreciate you. I look forward to working with all you, all, all of you and all the priests that have gathered. I look forward to working with each of you, uh, getting to know your names. I did spend some time with the directory, by the way, and some of you guys don't look like your picture. <laughs> so we'll get that worked out. To all of our seminarians and servers, we appreciate you and uh, I give thanks also to my mother and father who are in heaven. Uh, appreciate their blessing. I'm sure we have a big smile, and my father will be, have timed us for this service, I can tell you. <laughs> for my uh, family members that are here, uh, my brothers uh, and their wives, David and Hilda, Kenny and Donna, and all the extended family, I appreciate all of you. All the friends that are here, all of our parishioners from all over the diocese, uh, very much appreciate you representing each of your parishes and missions that we have in our schools, uh, wonderful. Um, all of my co-workers, the Diocese of Corpus Christi, uh, both in the diocese and in the various parishes I served in, especially St. Philip's, which was my last parish in Corpus Christi. Very special thank you also to Dr. Gerard Boynton and his staff and the staff of Doctors Regional Hospital, because that's why I'm still here. <laughs> also, all those that have been lifting me up in prayer over the last few months, and especially the Catholic school students, I received hundreds and hundreds of cards, and some of them were beyond cute. They were really sweet. And also the people of Biloxi have been praying for me. I appreciate that. I want to recognize uh, Mr. Jackie Ellie uh, and the Knights of Peter Claver, the Honor Guard. Also, Mayor Gillich, appreciate you in a special way for Biloxi and all of our uh, civil members. Thank you for being here. The Cathedral Choir. Uh, appreciate you and all of the choir members from throughout the diocese. Uh, they're wonderful. Uh, Nathan and Bob and the University of uh, Southern Mississippi Brass Quartet. Uh, and so let's give them a hand because they were really wonderful. Again, a thank you to the ordination committee and then to all the parishes that have brought food for the reception. 
and we have food for the reception, trust me. Uh, in attendance, uh, besides the mayor, we have James uh, Crowell. Uh, he is, uh, I think, the president of the N NAACP, so thank you for being here in a special way. Also, Reverend Paul Stevens, he's a canon from the Episcopal Diocese of Mississippi. Uh, we have Jim Fisher, Reverend Jim Fisher from the United Methodist Church, also with us. And a good friend of mine from seminary days, Reverend Tom Hill, and he's a Methodist minister, now retired, I believe. Good to have you here and your wife. Uh, Pastor Eric Dickey, First, First Missionary Baptist Church here in Biloxi, and also Reverend, G uh, Reverend James B. Roberts, retired pastor of the Episcopal Church of the Redeemer. Let me have all the civil people and all of our religious people that I just announced, please stand, if you will. Let's recognize them. Thank you for being here, and I look forward to working with each of you for our community. Uh, I'm going to keep my remarks short now. So as, as uh, you know, called to be the bishop of the diocese, I think the invitation is for us to take the heart to words of Jesus. And he said to us, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. If we take that as our theme, we are in his image. We are the body of Christ. And we sing to the world that God's grace is very much alive and God's grace is very much present with each of us. My brothers and sisters, God loves you. I love you. One of the little signs that we had in Corpus Christi on our newspaper was from Corpus Christi to Biloxi with love. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Deacon.
Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming. Blessings. And thank you all for coming. Appreciate you very much. Very much. Amen.